curses which Islam lays on its votaries. Besides the fanatical frenzy, which is as dangerous in a man as hydrophobia in a dog, there is this fearful, fatalistic apathy. The effects are apparent in many countries. Improvident habits, slovenly systems of agriculture, sluggish methods of commerce and insecurity of property exist wherever the followers of the Prophet Muhammad rule or live. A degraded sensualism deprives this life of its grace and refinement, and the next of its dignity and sanctity. The fact that in Islamic law, every woman must belong to some man as his absolute property, either as a wealth, a, a wife, a child, or a concubine, must delay the final extinction of slavery until the faith of Islam has ceased to be a great power amongst men. Individual Muslims may show splendid qualities, but the influence of the Islamic religion paralyzes the social development of those who follow it. No stronger retrograde force exists in this world, and far from it being moribund, Islamism is a militant and proselytizing faith. It is already spread throughout Central Africa, raising fearless warriors at every step. And were it not that Christianity is sheltered in the strong arms of science, the science against which Islam has vainly struggled, the civilization of modern Europe might fall, as fell the civilization of ancient Rome.